Hi, my name is Dennis Wilkinson, and I'm a development manager for the Simulink and Stateflow editors team here at the MathWorks. So we've been looking at existing features in Simulink and Stateflow and exploring how to find value in the features you already have but may not have known about. I want to take a look at old in Simulink and Stateflow, but with a little different lens and show you a bit about how we continue to work on making these features easier to find and use. So let's start with the oldest input device you probably have in your setup, your keyboard. Now, if we exclude editing text and parameters, there are two major ways the keyboard gets used in the editors. The first big use is to invoke shortcuts or accelerators. Now, where we support keyboard shortcuts, we do try and provide hints in the UI so that you can learn what those shortcuts are. We hope that these are little aha moments that'll help you find and learn these shortcuts just through your day-to-day -day use of Simulink and Stateflow. Now, there are more than a thousand actions available in Simulink and Stateflow, and that number is constantly getting larger in every release. Keyboards aren't getting new keys with every release, and even if we could give every possible combination of keys an action, no one would be able to remember all of them. So we added Quick Launch, just one keyboard shortcut to learn, Control dot, and you can type a few fragments of the words describing any action you want to take, no wildcards needed, and press Return to take that action. The second big use of the keyboard is through modifier keys, Control, Shift, and Alt, that modify the actions that you take with the mouse. Now you can always experiment with them when you're using the mouse. We preview the end result, and undo prevents losing any work. Or you can check out the keyboard and mouse actions for Simulink modeling page in our documentation, which covers all of that and a lot more. Now, we've also been working to make it possible to do more with just the keyboard. For example, in 17a, when you're highlighting signals to source or destination, now the left arrow will always move you towards the source of the signal, and the right arrow will always move you towards the destination of the signal. If you had a branch where you need to decide which one to follow, you can use the up and down arrow keys to select a branch, and then the left or right arrows to continue down towards the source or destination of the signal. When you reach your destination, you can press Control shift h to clear the highlighting and return to normal editing. In 19b, Quick Launch gave us a way to take actions on selected objects from the keyboard. But to change the selection, you still had to use the mouse. In 20b, we've made it possible to completely control your selection using the keyboard, including moving selected items and using Quick Launch to take other actions on them, all without ever touching the mouse. Now, when we already have thousands of things that you can do, how on earth do we give you new things to do and still expect you to be able to find them? In the perfect case, you're already doing something, and we can just take that thing and do it better. There's nothing new to find or do because you're already doing it. But if we can't do that, we try and give you something like a smart guide, a hint that makes you go, aha. We'll even propose the next hint, the next step of connecting those blocks that's easy to take with a single click. Smart guides, and indeed all of our smart editing features are built on those aha moments, giving you a hint in the editor to a possible next step in a way that doesn't get in your way if it's not the right next step. Before I wrap up, I want to show you two new old features. For many physical models, lines are difficult to manage because we keep inputs on the left and outputs on the right. As of 20A, you can simply drag ports on subsystems and model references to whatever side makes the most sense for your model. This will result in much cleaner layouts, particularly in physical models where this makes a lot of sense. Now, prior to the new editors that we introduced back in 12b, you could sometimes successfully edit more than one line at a time, but that feature had a lot of issues. In 12b, we only implemented editing a single line at a time, unless you were moving blocks, in which case we could route more than one line at a time, but even so, it didn't always do what you expected. We've brought the ability to edit more than one line at a time back in 20B, but better than before and more predictable than before. 
We hope that this will help you edit models that contain complicated arrangements of lines that much quicker. So we hope that you'll watch for those aha moments, explore what the modifier keys do, watch for our smart editing hints, and know that we're continuing to work on new ways to help you discover the features that are available to you. Thank you.